All right, so welcome to Photoshop. So today we're going to be going over how to save for the web. And uh, just like normal in Photoshop, there's uh, multiple ways to do this, but some are better than others. So we're going to be going over the better than other side. So your traditional way to save an image, obviously, is to just go up here and go file, save as. Um, we're not going to use that. So a lot of times you've, you're done, well, assuming that I'm done toning this image and this is exactly how I want to do it. So you notice it's a multi-layer 16-bit image. It's giant. It's 285 meg file. So um, it's just way too big. So normally I'd have to flatten this and I actually have an action to do a lot of this. But um, there is another way to do this. Now we don't want to accidentally overwrite this image. So what we're going to do is the old version first, which is file, export, save for legacy. So this will bring up a window here. And let me reduce this some so we can see it. So this is our image. And so what this is showing us is this is our original image on how it was toned. And this is optimized. And the optimized means whatever I have set as parameters, this is how it's going to be looked uh, or look like after I've saved it. So um, it gives you all kinds of different information down here and over here. So one of the key things is when I was working on this original image over here, it's in the color space of Adobe RGB. We do not want Adobe RGB because everything on the web uses the color profile of sRGB. So you will notice they have this convenient little check mark over here, convert this image to sRGB, which is absolutely wonderful and exactly what we want. So it saves us of the time of going through steps or uh, c making an action to do this within Photoshop which will resize your photo and change a whole bunch of stuff. This way, your original file never really changes and you don't accidentally um, save over your old image. So we've got this here. Then we've got something called 2-Up. And so this is showing the original image and how it's going to look. So you can see the color shift here, especially in the face, um, of saving this as a GIF. And then we can do 4-Up. And 4-Up is going to show you... Um, the original image, and this is just not the best view, but good enough anyways. It's showing the original and then different versions of it using more compression. So the compression is going to lower your file size, but also lower your quality. So we're just going to go back up to optimized. So over here, we also have uh, some default presets. So I could do JPEG high, and that's a default preset. I've actually uh, created one of my own uh I guess it's not here anymore. Um, so uh, there's all kinds of different stuff here. So what we'll do here is just hit delete settings. So we'll go back to normal. And this is going to allow us to save whatever we do. So if this is an action that we're going to be using all the time, um, this is going to be helpful. Uh, and we're going to save and then we'll just use this preset. So the first thing that we have is the file type. Do we want to save it as a GIF or a JPEG or a PNG? So you have your choices of file type that you want to save as. The next thing we have is our compression. So the lower the compression, the lower the image quality, but the smaller the file size. I actually use a program called JPEG Mini. Um, if you've never seen it, I think I have a video on that. If I do, I'll post a little link here now and you can go check out what JPEG Mini does. So um, for the most part, I save at maximum quality. Just the internet's fast enough now and it's not a huge issue as far as load times. Quality is sort of the same here. It's just instead of using kind of these settings, you have the quality slider from 100% to zero. Progressive is something you don't really see used anymore back in the old days when uh, you had an, a baud rate of nine. It would load images up in three steps and uh, to help save time. Um, and that's just not something you want to do anymore. So the optimize, so we're showing you what it's going to look like. Um, embed color profile. So if you click on that, it says include an ICC profile um, on the image. So you always want to go ahead and embed uh, a color profile 
in your image. So we're going to convert that to uh, sRGB as well. That way if somebody else gets your images and opens it up, it gets mapped right with the color. Um, right here we have different ways to preview the images. Use document profile, meaning the profile that is in the image, which is embedded, the color profile. That's what you want to use. Monitor color. In my case, uh, my monitor color and my profile are exactly the same, so it really wouldn't matter. But um, document profile is better. And then two, where you basically don't color manage, which is kind of ridiculous. So uh, we're going to go ahead and use that. Metadata. So metadata is information that you put um, in a field uh, such as copyright information, name, and stuff. Um, if you're a journalist, you'll see this used a lot where it has captions and that type of stuff. So I'm using all just because I have lots of it in there, so I want to keep it and save it. But if you just want your copyright or contact info or none, whatever you want, you can easily select there. Then we have image size. So notice, remember, this was a giant image before. We don't want that that big. So let's say that we want this image to be a thousand pixels wide. So that's its longest dimension, meaning this way. And notice this isn't, a, there's no DPI, there's no 10 inches 72 DPI. That is not something that's used on the web. Um, just bad old information. So if anybody tells you 10 inches 72 DPI, um, they don't understand the web. The web is fixed and uses pixel size, pixel dimension. And in pixel dimension, there is no pixels per inch it's because it's fixed it's just a thousand pixels um, or whatever you set this at so for right now we'll just do a thousand pixels um, I usually do a different size but for a th right now a thousand pixels is gonna be good so I've kind of got everything set up I know how it's gonna work we're good to go so if I wanted to save this because this is gonna be a setting that I use all the time and which is normal you know usually there's one or two settings and that's all you use so we can create our own little preset so I can come up here and say save settings and so we have the little settings here's the other ones and I can just save this as let's say a thousand P for pixels um, JPEG web hit save and then there we've got a thousand P JPEG web so that's giving me the information I need and then I would just go ahead and hit save and it's going to bring up my normal dialog box. I'm going to hit this little social media folder I saved here and I'll just so it's easier reference. I'll put a thousand P for a thousand pixels and hit save and voila, we're good to go. So if we go and open that image up, social media, open this up, go to image image size we'll see it's a thousand pixels um, on this image so it's been sized and everything is exactly how we told it uh, to be converted so um, the next thing that we're going to do is we'll just take a different image here is uh, we're going to go to two of the newer methods so one is and they're both under uh, export um, so we're going to go file export and notice we have quick export and export as but we also have the export preferences which we're going to visit first so export preferences um, are located here and this will allow you to pick your different file types and your image quality but notice it's it's kind of got these default settings so if you use quick export this is what it's going to use so ask where to export each time so if you want to save to a different uh, location um, every time, you should have that clicked. Export files to an assets folder next to the current document. So basically it's going to create a folder within a folder. Um, so if you click that, it's going to be a folder within a folder. We'll just put ask for each time. Um, personal preference doesn't matter. Metadata. So we have, uh, interesting uh, interestingly enough, copyright and contact only is all it gives you which is kind of odd and then the most important part convert to srgb which is what we want so we're going to hit ok so if i take this now and i go file export quick export as jpeg um, and remember it's going to let us pick the folder 
and voila, we're done. We've saved that image. The next one we have here is uh, we're going to go to um, just the export function. So the bad part of the quick export, and I kind of will go back to that real quick, is notice it doesn't have a way to convert image size. It's just using the default size that you have it. It's just making that a JPEG and that sRGB. So if you do use quick export, you have to make sure your image is sized correctly because it's going to it's going to save it as to whatever size you have. So it's not a big issue. You can easily create an action to do that. So the last one is export as. So we're going to go to export as and it's going to bring up something similar to the legacy version. Um, however, uh, it's, it's just a little bit more simplified and actually a little bit more intuitive. Um, as for using things today, once again, we have the different formats, our quality slider, and even more importantly, an image size. So if I wanted to make this 1280, and it's automatically going to uh, scale that image, so the proportions or the ratio stays the same. Um, so we have canvas size. You could change your canvas size. That's going to... Uh, has to do I'll do it real quick so I'll make this 2000 so that's just gonna add extra space on obviously in this it was width or height so if you wanted to add make this a thousand this is gonna add just space on the side so it's gonna save this whole white image and the photo so if you wanted that for some reason you could change your uh, canvas size but we're not gonna do that we're gonna leave it the same uh, metadata, uh, we'll click on the copyright and contact info and then uh, convert to sRGB and embed color profile. And we can hit export all. So we will click, go back to our social media. We've got Tiger, we hit save, and voila, that's done. So that's going to save that file. Um, and that is the last method. So you will notice there um, are some quick settings here, uh, our quick keys to get to those. So we can do um, our quick seat, uh, which is command shift, or command option shift W and command option shift S for save for legacy. So there are some quick keys. There's also this new thing up here um, that was put, I think it was the last iterator, uh, version of Photoshop. And so it has just some basic save things. So if you wanted to save the original or a small or to Facebook or these little quick uh, like share icons, um, you can set those up and use that as well. So hopefully that was helpful. You learned a little bit about saving for the web. Um, if you have any comments or questions, uh, you can leave those in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.